What's going on guys and welcome to another crack a pack episode today We are opening up a pack of magic origins. This is a really uh, fun set It was cool for the lore and just the background story of all the planeswalkers So I'm super excited to open that we did have the first flip planeswalkers in this set as well uh, Really hoping to open baby Jace in fact, that's kind of the card that I am after I never actually got one I didn't open much of this set. So uh, hopefully we get something awesome, but uh, we will go through this as with any pack as if it is a pack one pick one scenario so we will figure out hopefully what a reasonable first round draft pick will be our first card here is grasp of the hieromancer so this is an enchant creature for one and a white uh, the creature gets plus one plus one and has whenever this creature attacks tap target creature defending player controls actually uh, normally don't like enchant creatures, but in this case, I'm not too bad uh, too unhappy about it It's really good in just like a red white aggressive strategy to be able to tap down one of their creatures to make sure yours get in for damage really really important in that strategy and so uh, Giving a little bit of a power boost as well as the ability to tap down something of theirs uh, Is actually really really important. So I kind of like it in that regard you do still run the 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 issue of uh, opening yourself up for a two for one that's really the biggest issue if they remove the creature you've put two cards now the creature and the enchant creature in just for one spell they've gotten rid of both uh, that's kind of the huge downside with enchant creatures and really any kind of uh, uh, equipment kind of a thing yes equipments are a little bit easier but it still runs that issue uh, and so not my favorite card, but if I am in an aggressive strategy, uh, I probably wouldn't be too unhappy to have one or two of these in my deck, especially in a Magic Origin set, which is, uh, relatively speaking, a kind of corset style set, so it's a little bit easier uh, in terms of drafting. Uh, Night Snare is a sorcery for three and a black. Target opponent reveals his or her hand. You may choose a non-land card from it, and if you do, that player discards that card. If you don't, that player discards two cards. So this is really interesting. I normally am okay with hand destruction, but this is a little bit high costed. Uh, it's it's interesting because you can get two cards for that four, uh, four man mana cost, but it's still a little bit too late. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not a huge fan of that uh, just because they might not even have that many cards in their hand by the time you play this. So I don't like this. Uh, generally speaking, not my favorite kind of card. Uh, Dragon Fodder is a sorcery for one and a red. Put two 1-1 one, one red goblin creature tokens onto the battlefield. This is exactly the kind of card that I love. It's aggressive. It's a two for one. Immediately you get two creatures for the price of one card. I love that. Yes, they are only one ones, but this is as early as turn two. And a lot of times plays don't happen until maybe turn two or three for some decks. Uh, so this spreads out the damage. It gives you a couple creatures and it's an aggressive card. I really, really like this so far as the best card uh, for sure. <laughs> uh, Nivix Barrier. Uh, is a 0 4 for 3 and a blue. It does have flash and defender, so you can play it at instant speed, but it cannot attack. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, target attacking creature gets minus 4, minus 0 until the end of the turn. This is really interesting. It's okay uh, if you've got other creatures that can block and maybe uh, hopefully deal enough damage to destroy the attacking creature uh, after you've played uh, the Nivix Barrier, but I don't really like that it depends on other stuff and it is just a wall, so it's really just a stall card. Uh, not my favorite kind of thing, so generally speaking, not going to be interested in that. Uh, Timber Pack Wolf is a 2-2 for one and a green already pretty pretty fair costed uh, but it does get plus one plus one for each other creature you control named timber pack wolf so this is a really interesting card uh, pretty awesome if you can get maybe three of these in a deck you're really really good uh, in terms of your two drops and they just build each other up they're fantastic uh, you can get your first one is just a 2-2 two, two for 2, which is already perfectly fine value. Uh, but then your second one turns them all into 3-3s. Three, your, th your third one turns them into 4-4s. Four, it's fantastic. So I actually really, really like this card. I think I like it more than Dragon Fodder just because it is a solid 2-drop. Uh, but uh, yeah, I think I think for now, I would definitely pick the, the Wolf over the Dragon Fodder. Uh, Evolving Wilds, a classic land you can tap and sacrifice it to search your library for a basic land and put it onto the battlefield tapped and then you shuffle your library. We've seen this card reprinted multiple times. Uh, it's no surprise it's in a core set. It just gives you a little bit of fixing. So if you are in a multicolored deck, uh, this is a really good card to pick up maybe late in the draft 
really not good early because you may not even need it, uh, unfortunately, but uh, it is good in that instance. So definitely later on in the draft, if you find yourself in two, maybe three colors, oftentimes you'll find yourself in at minimum two. Uh, it's not a bad idea to pick up at Evolving Wilds. It's always kind of a safe pick, something that if there really isn't anything else in the pack, this is always going to be just perfectly fine. Uh, Titan Strength is an instant for one red. Target creature gets plus three, plus one until the end of the turn, and then you scry one. Uh, this is actually a really, really good combat trick. Uh, I don't like taking combat tricks early, but it is a very, very good one. So uh, giving a big boost of plus three, plus one, that's a lot of power, uh, especially for only one mana. And not only that, but you get to fix the top of your deck with that scry one. Really, really like that. A lot of value for only one mana. If I'm in red uh, late in the draft, this is exactly the kind of card that I want. Early, not so much. Uh, Read the Bones is a sorcery for two and a black. You scry two, then you draw two cards. You do lose two life in the process, uh, but this is actually a pretty good draw spell. Um, I've talked a little bit about draw spells before. They're not necessarily the most uh, impactful cards in a draft, uh, just because they don't have, it's not like you're putting anything out on the board, and so therefore you're not really affecting the game in terms of the actual state of the board in front of you, but you are setting yourself up to maybe do something major on the next turn, or hopefully, uh, well, hopefully the next turn, ideally. Uh, but that's really the goal, and so it's always good to maybe have one or two draw spells in your deck, uh, if, if you're in the colors that usually get them. Uh, but generally speaking, I don't like to take them early. They're safe picks, they're perfectly fine, uh, but I'd rather have a little more direction early on if I can get it. Uh, Fairy Miscreant is a 1-1 flyer for one blue. When it enters the battlefield, if you control another creature named Fairy Miscreant, you draw a card. So this is very similar to the Timber Pack Wolf, but obviously in blue. 1-1 uh, flyer for one is great value already. Uh, but on top of that, if you control multiple, you just start drawing some cards. So I actually kind of like this card. This was a bit of a card uh, that during the time of this set, I wasn't actually sold on. I thought it was just fine, but it's going to die. It's the classic 1-1 flyer thing. But honestly, if you can even just draw one card off of uh, one of these fairy miscreants that you end up getting, it's kind of worth it. So I actually like this card quite a lot. I don't think I like it more than the wolf, uh, just because that power boost really, really gives you some more board presence. This is just going to be a 1-1 pinger, uh, which is fine, but it does draw you that card as well. So if you're more into that, I could see taking this, but I would rather have the wolf. Uh, Nissa's Pilgrimage is a sorcery for two and a green. Uh, so you search your library for up to two basic forest cards, reveal them, put one onto the battlefield tapped and the rest into your hand, and then you shuffle your library. Uh, it does have spell mastery, so if there are two or more instant and sorcery cards in your graveyard, you search your library for up to three basic for forest cards Excuse me, instead of two. Uh, so this is your classic uh, just pull out ramp kind of cards. It is only forests, which makes it a little bit worse uh, than something that pulls just basic lands uh, because you can't really fix yourself off of this. But uh, this does give you a little bit extra uh, just mana ramp if you're into that deck. I don't like taking this card early, uh, not at all, because it really does not do anything right off the bat. Again, board presence is everything. This sets you up, which is great, but I would much rather have cards that impact the board directly. Uh, and so for me, this is a perfectly fine card if you're in a ramp strategy. Definitely, definitely want something like this, but in general, I want to be in that strategy before taking this card. Uh, our first uncommon here is Ira's Champion. Iris's Champion, excuse me. Hope I'm saying that correctly. It's a 2 2 uh, for one, a red and a white, and it has double strike. So uh, it deals with its first strike damage and then also regular combat damage after the fact. That's very, very, very powerful for a three drop uh, at 2 2. That's pretty strong. It's essentially a 4 4 that also has priority in combat, which is pretty fantastic. Uh, I really, really like this. I don't like that it's a gold card. Uh, in a in this particular set obviously in a Ravnica set or something like that you're gonna be in two colors regardless it's easier to 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 kind of move around from one guild to the next uh, because there is much more fixing in this set this is just an origin set so there isn't necessarily as much fixing as you would expect to have in a set like a Ravnica set or something and so I don't usually like taking gold cards early they pigeonhole you just a bit uh, because you're always going to be skewing towards wanting to play that first pick a little bit uh, I do think it's a better card though by a long way than Timber Pack Wolf so I will say here uh, this is definitely so far the pick 
Uh, Knightly Valor is an enchant creature for four and a white. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, you put a 2-2 white knight creature token with vigilance onto the battlefield, as well as the enchanted creature getting a plus two, plus two bonus and vigilance. That's a lot on a singular card. This is actually a really, really powerful card in my opinion uh, because it spits out a 2-2 two, two, and it buffs the creature. Uh, so yes, you open yourself up for a two for one on that one creature, but uh, you also have something left behind regardless. So you're opening, you're giving yourself two cards for the price of one already. Kind of evens that out in my mind. This also is not a gold card, so it isn't going to pigeonhole you quite as much as something like the champion will. And so for that reason, uh, I do believe I would take this over the champion for sure. Uh, our last un uncommon here is Thopter Engineer. It's a 1-3 for 2 and a red. When it enters the battlefield, you put a 1-1 one, one colorless Thopter artifact creature token with flying onto the battlefield. Artifact creatures you control have haste. Uh, so that's actually pretty powerful as well. Obviously, a 3-drop with only 1-1 one, uh, one, uh, power and 3 toughness is not the best in terms of value, but you do get another 1-1 one, one flying creature along with it. Uh, which is actually pretty useful because you can start paying the opponent pretty quickly and in fact a turn earlier because all of your artifacts get haste. I really like that anthem effect with artifacts. There are a lot of thopters in this set uh, and so being able to give all of them haste is pretty powerful. You're going to be able to get in for a little extra damage that way. I don't know if it's better than the valor uh, to be honest. I feel like on pure power level the valor gives you a little bit more just right off the bat, but I think the Thopter Engineer gives you a little bit more synergy and a little bit more higher potential uh, for those artifact creatures. I think I would take the Engineer over the Valor. That may be incorrect 100%, but that's just my play style. I like the go wide artifact strategy a little bit in this set, so that's probably what I would go for. And then our rare, uh, yeah, we're definitely taking the rare, Mana Corger Hydra. Uh, it is a 1-1 one, one for 2 and a green, which does not sound great, but it does have trample, and whenever a player casts a spell, any spell, you put a plus 1, plus 1 counter on Mana Corger Hydra. This thing can go absolutely nuts. If it's left unchecked, it will go crazy, uh, get tons and tons of counters, and just take over a game. It ends it very, very quickly. Uh, because of that trample, it's not like they can just chump block it all day, uh, and so I really, really like that. 100% that's the pick in my mind. We did not get a foil, so without uh, any real hesitation, in my opinion, the Mana Gorger Hydra is the one I would pick. Feel free to disagree in the comment section below, but if you did like this video, please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below. And as always, please make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our awesome content. But with that, I'm going to get out of here. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next Crack-A-Pack video.